Yes, hello to you all once again. Welcome back to Classic Dirt Bike uh, TV. And if you're a brand new subscriber uh, to my channel, then uh, welcome aboard. And I hope you can find uh, something in here that can entertain you with regards uh, looking at these old school uh, motocross uh, machines. Now, we're currently in the process of uh, putting together and uh, editing uh, some of the nice uh, bikes that we filmed at uh, this year's 2024 Telford uh, classic dirt bike show and uh, there was <laughs> quite a few machines this year so we're gradually uh, making our way uh, through the piles of uh, lovely bikes uh, that we filmed. So uh, we're going to crack on now and get right in to our next uh, feature which of course is uh, the third uh, video from the Telford 2024 show and this of course is episode three. Right, okay, so we're going to kick off uh, this episode uh, three from uh, Telford with a quick look around uh, the Wolf Sport uh, stand. And uh, as usual, Bill Brown and the family have brought along uh, a nice array of uh, Michael Classics. And uh, we're going to start by taking a look at this uh, Michael uh, twin cylinder bike, which was actually built uh, by uh, Belgian racer uh, Norbert uh, van Dunn. And uh, Norbert uh, again, has a vast collection of uh, Michael race bikes, including uh, this uh, twin-cylinder uh, creation. Now, it's said that the, the motivation uh, for Norbert to actually build his bike uh, came after he saw uh, a similar machine that was uh, built by uh, former GP motocross racing legend uh, Wolfgang uh, Schrader. Now, Although, uh, rather than uh, build a copy of uh, Schrader's original machine, Norbert uh, wanted to put his own spin uh, on his new bike and uh, made it even better than uh, Schrader's uh, original design. And so the original uh, design of the frame uh, with regards its uh, fork rake angle and uh, the positioning of uh, the seat and the tank and uh, the foot pegs, etc., were all uh, copied uh, from a 1985 KTM, but uh, the frame tubes are all uh, made of alloy, and these were all uh, bent and shaped and welded uh, by Norbert uh, himself. But as we move uh, on to that uh, lovely twin cylinder engine, which uh, has an all alloy uh, construction and the crankcases are all uh, handmade uh, by uh, Norbert and these uh, consist of six separate parts uh, to make them up into the outer uh, casings. Now the crankshaft is uh, actually two separate cranks uh, side by side but uh, they're both connected together uh, by a short uh, drive chain and uh, both of the cranks are uh, taken from a sax 50cc motor which uh, had uh, the correct length of stroke uh, to complete uh, this engine. Now both of the engine's uh, barrels and heads have been uh, taken from an MD50 uh, Michael road bike from 1973 which of course uh, had that uh, rotary valve intake system but once again uh, Norbert's uh, changed uh, that particular system to uh, a twin uh, Delorto uh, carb uh, reed valve uh, intake uh, configuration. Now the exhausts of course are all uh, handmade and uh, as you can see they pass through this uh, square box shaped uh, alloy uh, component which uh, certainly looks like it could be the motor's air box but uh, is actually uh, part of the bike's exhaust uh, system that leads onto these twin uh, tailpipes here uh, at the back. But you can see that it's all been uh, well thought through and is nice and neat and tidy and you can uh, only imagine uh, what this twin cylinder motor sounds like when these uh, twin tailpipes are going at full bore. Now the bike's uh, two millimetre thick alloy uh, swing arm uh, was uh, again designed by Norbert but uh, the actual welding of this part was left uh, to expert uh, welders but it's basically made up from three separate parts all uh, welded uh, together but as you can see it's super strong and uh, looks 
absolutely uh, fantastic. Now also here at the front end we have these uh, forks and these are uh, genuine uh, Michael forks that were actually used on the big uh, Michael racers from the 1970s but naturally of course these have been uh, shortened uh, to fit this uh, mini uh, racer and uh, the front and rear hubs are just your standard uh, Michael parts although uh, the rear one has been taken uh, from a 125 uh, Michael. And as we uh, make our way up uh, to the top end uh, of the bike now, uh, this uh, fuel tank here certainly uh, looks like it could just be your stock uh, standard uh, 1974 alloy uh, micro tank, but uh, this is uh, actually uh, a copy that uh, Norbert's uh, made himself. And uh, of course, he's deliberately uh, scaled it down so that it would fit his uh, little uh, Michael twin. And uh, without doubt, this is still a very uh, rare and interesting uh, little motorcycle and it's uh, superbly engineered uh, by Norbert uh, Van Dunn. And uh, can you just imagine if Michael uh, had this kind of uh, initial idea back in the 1970s or 80s and uh, came up uh, with a twin cylinder racer uh, such as this, but uh, it would have been great to have been able to get this little baby uh, fired up and uh, have a quick listen uh, to those twin uh, cylinders uh, and pipes. But this uh, was another uh, little gem that uh, Bill had brought along uh, to Telford this year and uh, this is what looks like uh, an almost uh, stock original uh, 78 to 50 uh, Michael and uh, probably one of the hundreds of uh, German bikes that Bill's uh, got stashed away in his Aladdin's cave at uh, Lily Hall but uh, this bike here certainly uh, looks like it's got all of the hallmarks uh, of a machine that's been stored for uh, quite some time as uh, those original plastics are uh, just beginning to fade a bit now but uh, nothing of course that can't be put right if you wanted uh, to put this bike back uh, on the track. And uh, whether this uh, particular bike was uh, up for sale or maybe just sitting here uh, on display on the day, uh, I don't uh, actually know, but it would certainly make uh, a cracking uh, club racer's bike with it being uh, the much uh, easier 250 and not the big uh, monster uh, 490, which, of course, uh, as you know, is a completely different animal uh, altogether. And uh, talking of which, uh, these uh, are the 1981 uh, Wellsport uh, 490 Michaels here with their slimline uh, plastic fuel tanks and uh, those snazzy uh, Wellsport uh, graphics. And uh, this is Wellsport's uh, own interpretation of uh, the mighty uh, 490, which of course uh, they build uh, from time to time, although uh, I'm not exactly sure if uh, Wolfsport are uh, still uh, building these bikes uh, to order uh, anymore. But uh, as you can see, they're cracking uh, looking machines and super fast as well. And this one here has the Reed Valve uh, 490 engine uh, inside uh, the frame. Although certainly uh, much more bolder uh, graphics than the original uh, 81 tank uh, badges and uh, more colourful as well because you could uh, have your uh, 490s in a variety of different colours including uh, this uh, kind of white theme with some uh, nice uh, anodized uh, alloy parts uh, as well but uh, if you're a Michael uh, traditionalist then uh, you can also have your bike in this uh, kind of red theme with traditional uh, red and yellow uh, graphics, but you're always kind of spoilt for choice when you visit uh, Wolf Sport HQ or come along uh, to their stands at these uh, kind of shows where you can wander around uh, like a kid in a sweet shop looking at all of the goodies that they have uh, in store. But uh, the guys at Wolf Sport have certainly improved on uh, what was already a pretty awesome uh, motorcycle. 
And of course, uh, you can't uh, visit the Wolf Sports Stand without uh, taking a quick gander. Uh, Bill's uh, pride and joy is fantastic. Uh, Trico, uh, which is uh, made from a 1981 uh, twin shop Michael frame and uh, a twin cylinder 500 uh, Triumph uh, motor, which was actually uh, bored out in order for it to accept a pair of uh, six uh, 50 pistons. But ever since uh, Bill uh, built this bike many years ago, it's never uh, really even been on a racetrack, and uh, Bill said that it probably uh, never will because. Uh, once, of course, it's been used on a racetrack, he said it then just becomes uh, another uh, hybrid uh, second-hand uh, dirt bike. Although uh, I've already had the pleasure of listening uh, to this bike start up, and uh, if you were to take a look at the full feature that I did on this bike in one of my uh, previous videos, then uh, you'll get the full story and the startup of this uh, exceptional uh, machine. But many people have certainly offered Bill uh, crazy money for this bike in the past, but uh, he continues uh, to keep a firm uh, grip on his uh, baby, as he calls it, and uh, I can understand why, because this bike is certainly uh, a one-off, and there's not uh, another like it. Although just before we leave uh, the Wolf Sport stand, uh, this uh, immaculate uh, Michael Alpha 1490 and uh, was also uh, sitting uh, on their stand uh, but uh, I don't actually uh, think this belonged uh, to the Wolf Sport guys I'm pretty sure that this was uh, Peter Williamson's bike and uh, Peter uh, had this uh, advertised for sale at £7,450 and I must say this is uh, probably uh, one of the nicest Alpha 1s that I've uh, ever seen and of course it's been fully uh, rebuilt using 100% uh, all uh, genuine uh, Michael parts. And basically, uh, everything on this bike is now uh, brand new. And I don't think uh, that these uh, Alpha 1s were even as clean and tidy uh, as this when they came off the factory floor in the early uh, 1980s. And uh, this bike here was just uh, one of a couple of German uh, Michaels that Peter had uh, at the show and we'll take a look at his uh, other example uh, sometime later in uh, this uh, series. So just like the rest of the bike, the engine's uh, been treated to a full uh, nut and bolt uh, rebuild and this was all done by uh, Racebase uh, here in the UK and basically every part on this motor was uh, rebuilt regardless of its age or uh, condition. And even the bike's rear shock is a brand new Olin's uh, unit. But uh, just looking at this bike, you can see it's shining uh, like a brand new pin. Although I'm not entirely sure if these uh, Alpha 1 engines were painted uh, black in uh, that year. But for me personally, this is uh, the kind of bike that you'd uh, just like to put into a collection if you are uh, one of these uh, lucky people who can afford uh, to fill your garage or your workshop with these kind of uh, unblemished examples of uh, motocross history. And it's just uh, far too nice a bike uh, to put it back uh, onto a track and then spoil its uh, immaculate looks. Now again, I don't uh, actually know if this bike here was uh, sold over the two days of the show. In fact, it might even uh, still be uh, available, who knows, but uh, this bike here was uh, certainly uh, grabbing the punters' attention as they made their way uh, around uh, the halls over the course uh, of uh, the two days. But certainly the more uh, you look at this bike, uh, the more uh, uh, that you like it when you see all of the nice uh, rebuild engineering that's gone in uh, to this uh, fantastic uh, machine but uh, I've seen a few of these uh, Alpha ones uh, in the past and uh, they're certainly uh, not uh, up to the standard uh, this uh, little beauty and these are uh, quite rare bikes getting now these uh, Alpha ones there's not too many of them 
going uh, around, but uh, certainly another immaculate classic uh, from this year's uh, Telford uh, Dirt Bike Show, a lovely uh, 1980s uh, Alpha One uh, Michael. Okay, so uh, next up we're going to uh, move on to the Bull Tackle Club uh, UK stand where uh, they had some really uh, nice examples of their Spanish-built uh, bikes on display along uh, with this rather snazzy uh, thumbs-up Bull Tackle uh, logo sign and uh, also uh, a few other pieces of Bull Tackle uh, memorabilia including uh, this uh, bag here which is a very uh, rare item to find uh, nowadays. So uh, first up we're going to take a look at this quite nice uh, 250, possibly uh, from the early uh, 1970s because I'm not exactly uh, sure of the year of this bike but I think these were called the boat tails as I remember because of that rear uh, bodywork panel that uh, resembled the upturned hull uh, of a boat but uh, again another immaculately uh, turned out uh, machine much much like the other uh, bull tackles that we saw in uh, the previous episodes but uh, it certainly continues to amaze me how these guys can get these old uh, scramblers uh, looking uh, so good because I, I don't think uh, they ever looked this good when they left uh, the factory originally and you almost uh, need to have your sunglasses on uh, to cut down on the glare and the shine uh, from uh, these machines bodywork but again, a nice, uh, neat and tidy 250 bull tackle engine. Uh, a two-stroke, of course, with that uh, underslung exhaust uh, system, which uh, was quite a dominant feature on these bull tackles uh, back in the day. But uh, the bike's bodywork, including uh, this uh, fuel tank, uh, would have been made uh, from fiberglass in the 1970s. But uh, again, another beautifully turned out example of Spanish engineering this uh, lovely boat tail uh, 250 which was uh, just one of about uh, half a dozen bikes that the uh, Bull Tackle Club uh, UK had uh, on their stand and uh, this is another uh, cracker of a bike uh, this uh, bike here is I think a 1975 uh, 350 uh, Sherpa Trials bike just uh, one of hundreds of trials machines that were on display at this year's uh, Telford uh, show and again this is another uh, pristine example and uh, as I said these guys uh, must have spent uh, weeks getting these bikes uh, ready uh, for the show because this is another one that's uh, shining uh, like a brand new pin so a big well done to the owner uh, for all uh, of his uh, hard work. And uh, as we continue uh, to take a look at uh, more of these bull tackle machines, now I've said it uh, before in the past, I'm not really uh, a trials bike uh, man and uh, what I actually know about these uh, trials two-wheelers uh, you could write uh, on the back of a postage stamp. So uh, certainly don't quote me on any of uh, the details that I'm uh, passing out because uh, I'm sure that uh, all of you Bull Tackle Trials bike riders out there will uh, instantly know exactly uh, what you're looking at here uh, on uh, your screens. But uh, I can uh, tell you that uh, this bike that we're looking at here uh, is uh, a 350 because <laughs> it's got it stamped on the bike's uh, side panel. But uh, again, this is another uh, superbly uh, turned out machine and a credit uh, to the owner or owners who keep uh, all of these bikes in these uh, kind of conditions because uh, these uh, look far too good to be uh, used on a muddy uh, trials uh, section but uh, yet again uh, another stunning uh, trials machine from the Bull Tackle Club uh, UK who actually had uh, quite a good selection of bikes and uh, rare Bull Tackle memorabilia uh, on display as well so uh, that's just a, a quick uh, look around uh, their stand and uh, at some of their fantastic bikes uh, as well. And uh, in the fourth uh, coming episodes from the show, we'll uh, be taking a look at uh, another 
uh, one or two examples of uh, these kind of trials uh, machines. Now, next up, the uh, Greaves Riders Association were also at the Telford show again this year, celebrating their 40th anniversary of their organisation, and uh, they'd uh, brought along some very nice examples of those uh, 1960s Greaves Scramblers, which uh, did have some uh, quite rare bikes uh, included in their lineup, which uh, unfortunately uh, were so tightly uh, packed together that we just couldn't get uh, a decent uh, look at them, although uh, I did uh, manage to persuade one of the club members to, to pull a bike out uh, into the aisle, but uh, that was uh, up until one of uh, Telford's finest security personnel uh, gave me a bit of a bollocking for uh, blocking uh, the aisle, and so we had to then uh, return the bike back into the lineup. But uh, that's the thing about this uh, show at Telford. Uh, some of the really uh, rare and exotic bikes are almost uh, inaccessible. Although just before uh, I eventually got my backside kicked, uh, we did uh, manage to get a few shots of uh, the bike in question, and uh, this uh, superb Greaves uh, Scrambler here is a 1961 250 Hoxton, which uh, again, as you can see, is uh, immaculately uh, turned out. But I'm sure you've already heard me uh, mention in the past about the days of the old uh, black and white TVs in the winter uh, scrambles that the BBC used to broadcast live uh, on a Saturday uh, afternoon. Well, this uh, lovely Greaves here is uh, a typical example uh, of the kind of bikes that uh, used to take part in those uh, cold, wet and uh, windy uh, winter events when uh, you could watch the likes of the late uh, Brian uh, Badger Goss and Jeff Smith and Dave Bickers, Alan Clough and uh, many others, including uh, the likes of Vic uh, Eastwood, who would be uh, up to their armpits in mud as they raced around the tracks on uh, bikes uh, like these old Greaves. But you can see here that uh, even back in 1961, Greaves uh, were using this uh, I-beam alloy uh, front uh, frame spar on these old uh, scramblers, and uh, many people still think it was uh, one of the big four of uh, Yamaha, Suzuki, Honda, or Kawasaki who actually invented an alloy uh, frame on a motocrosser. But uh, as you can see, uh, the British-made uh, Greaves was already using uh, alloy frames uh, 30 or so years uh, before them. Anyhow, these uh, earlier uh, Greaves machines were powered by a British-built uh, Villiers uh, two-stroke engine, but of course later uh, Greaves would then go on to design and build their own engine uh, to power uh, some of the later models like the uh, Challengers and uh, Griffin uh, race bikes. And you can see how this uh, motor here would be a, a nice, light, uh, flickable uh, race bike because uh, it did have a light gauge tubular steel uh, rear chassis with, of course, that very strong alloy uh, beam up there uh, at the front. But this uh, Villiers motor was uh, certainly no 490 micro power plant and it didn't uh, give you that uh, arm-wrenching uh, power, but uh, it was still... Uh, reasonably uh, reliable and, uh, of course, British built. And uh, this was uh, the motorcycle engine uh, technology of its day uh, in uh, the UK. So fuel uh, to feed that Villiers engine was supplied through this uh, big Amal uh, monoblock carburetor, and it was probably uh, one of those uh, old school uh, paper or wire gauze type air filters that would have sat inside this uh, kind of twin airbox uh, type setup. Now, up here at the front end of our Greaves Hoxton Classic, it was uh, their leading link uh, suspension uh, set up with uh, what had a basic pair of uh, dampers uh, slipped inside just to try and soak up 
uh, those massive bumps that these bikes had to cope with in the 1960s. Now, the front hub uh, was an alloy uh, part and it was their uh, paddle wheel uh, hub, which uh, was designed uh, just to try and catch moving air as it rotated uh, to help uh, the hub uh, stay nice and uh, cool. But uh, here at the back, it was uh, yet another uh, just basic uh, pair of dampers that offered uh, very little in the way of suspension travel uh, or movement. But again, this is what these older uh, Scrambles legends uh, had to work with uh, in uh, that era. Although one of the more interesting parts on this bike was uh, the chain oiler system, whereby you just remove this little cap here uh, on this tube and then uh, filled it uh, with oil. And then the oil uh, ran across to the left-hand side uh, of the swing arm where it then uh, just uh, dripped oil uh, periodically uh, on uh, to the chain through this uh, little uh, plastic tube. But uh, it was a very simple system and uh, very practical uh, as well. Yeah, but uh, as I said, I was very uh, lucky just to be able to get these few shots of the bike before uh, security came along because uh, they certainly don't like you pulling uh, bikes out into the walkways just in case uh, maybe a member of the public catches a, a handlebar in the ribs or maybe trips over uh, something and uh, tends to sue the organisation but uh, I can understand that but uh, I still think it was worth it just to get some uh, decent shots of this uh, fantastic uh, old school uh, racer. And you can see that these are the old uh, type of handlebars with uh, no crossbar uh, welded onto them. These are uh, how these bikes were uh, back in the day but uh, certainly a fine example of one of these uh, 1961 uh, Greaves uh, Hoxton uh, racers, named of course after the great uh, Brian Stonebridge uh, when he won uh, that big race event at Hoxton Park when he beat uh, all of the big British uh, four-strokes bikes while he was uh, riding just a small uh, 200cc uh, two-stroker. So uh, these Greaves Hoxtons uh, were named uh, just to celebrate Brian's uh, success uh, on that day. But uh, a cracking bike and uh, a very good subject to use in profile as part of the Greaves Riders Association's 40th anniversary celebrations. So that's the uh, latest uh, batch of bikes from uh, this year's 2024 Telford uh, Classic Dirt Bike Show. As I said, we still have uh, a lot more uh, machines uh, still to feature here on my channel, but we'll get to it uh, as soon as we uh, possibly can. But uh, that's about it uh, for the time being, and I do hope that uh, you will either uh, subscribe uh, to my channel or return uh, so we can take a look at our next feature, which of course is episode four.